Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Can Armadillos Show Us How to Regrow a Liver? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Cell Reports Medicine, published on November 15, 2022. Research conducted by Anura Rampukana and others from the Institute for Regeneration and Repair at the University of Edinburgh in the UK. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. What if we could make our body's old or sick cells act young again? Surprisingly, the bacteria that cause leprosy may show us how. Previously, we discovered that infecting cells with leprosy bacteria in a laboratory dish reprogram the cells back to an immature state. The cells may then be able to produce many different types of cells in the body, and maybe even regenerate an organ. To test this in an actual animal, we infected nine banded armadillos with leprosy bacteria. We compared their livers to the livers of uninfected armadillos. The livers of armadillos infected with leprosy were larger than those of uninfected armadillos. Importantly, these larger livers were healthy, with no signs of damage. We performed genetic analyses on the liver cells to determine which genes were active. Our results show that leprosy infection reprograms adult liver cells to make them resemble immature liver cells. Maybe someday we can adapt this natural process to regrow aging and damaged livers in humans. Introduction. Sometimes people need a new organ because disease or injury has damaged one of theirs. Unfortunately, waiting for a transplant organ from an appropriate donor can take a really long time. Imagine needing a new heart but having to wait for years. What if they could just grow a new organ instead? Scientists are interested in learning how to regenerate organs for people. They have tried different techniques in the laboratory to encourage organs to grow back. However, there are major safety concerns. These approaches often cause scars or tumor growth. Previously, we made a surprising discovery. We infected nerve cells from adult mice with the bacteria that causes leprosy. Here in figure one, you can see leprosy bacteria, Mycobacteria leprae the microscopic rod-shaped bacteria that cause the disease leprosy. In the image, the bacteria can be seen as purple rods on an orange background. Leprosy is a contagious disease that affects the nerves, skin, eyes, and nose. The bacteria cause the cells to return to a more immature state. Instead of looking like adult nerve cells, they looked more like stem cells. Stem cells are immature cells that don't have a specific role in the body yet. When an organism is forming, these cells can become any type of cell needed for a given organ. Some stem cells are also present in adult organs. Usually, they are inactive. When they sense damage to tissues, they activate to repair it. But as we get older, our stem cells have a harder time repairing our organs. Turning adult cells into stem cells could be a way to build a new functioning organ or make an older organ young again. That's exciting. But those previous experiments with leprosy bacteria were on mouse cells in a laboratory dish. We wondered if the same process would occur in an actual living animal. Methods. We chose to look at leprosy infection in nine banded armadillos. Armadillos are mammals native to the southwest U.S. We focused on potential regeneration of the liver. This organ has many functions, including removing toxins from the body's blood supply and maintaining healthy blood sugar levels. Unfortunately, the liver is also a target for bacterial growth. The liver has an astonishing ability to regenerate on its own in healthy people. However, we do not know how to trigger liver renewal in patients who need it most, those with liver disease or injury. We infected armadillos with the leprosy bacteria. 
After 10 to 30 months of infection, we removed their livers and compared them to livers from uninfected armadillos. We looked at the liver cells under high-powered microscopes. We also performed analyses on the cell's DNA to identify which genes were active. We wanted to see if the pattern of gene activity in the cells looked more like adult liver cells or immature stem cells. Results. We calculated the ratio of each armadillo's liver to its total body weight. We found that the livers of armadillos infected with leprosy bacteria were about 50% larger than those of uninfected armadillos. Even though the infected livers had grown, they were otherwise normal. Infected livers had the same anatomy as uninfected livers. Importantly, the enlarged livers were healthy and functional. They showed no signs of scarring or tumor growth. Next, we measured gene activity in infected and uninfected livers. We found several signs that the liver cells of infected armadillos were, quote, reprogrammed to act like stem cells. The gene activity patterns of infected liver cells were similar to those of younger animals' livers and developing human livers. In infected armadillos, genes associated with growth and development became active. Some of these genes are usually active when the liver is forming in a developing organism. At the same time, genes associated with aging were suppressed. Here in figure 2, you can see the weight of the liver compared to the total body weight of armadillos uninfected, on the left in purple, or infected with leprosy, on the right in orange. Each bar in the graph represents an individual armadillo. The y-axis of the graph represents the liver to body weight ratio. The two dashed lines represent the average liver to body weight ratio for both uninfected or control armadillos and the infected armadillos. Looking at the graph, on average, which group of armadillos had larger livers? Discussion. Our results suggest that leprosy bacteria reprogram liver cells and return them to a stem cell-like or more youthful state. Once in this state, the cells can encourage new liver cells to mature and grow new liver tissue. This leads to liver growth. We think that the bacteria take advantage of the natural regenerative ability of the liver to increase the organ size. This gives the bacteria more cells to infect. We cannot say for sure if these findings would work in human livers, and we are not about to infect any people with leprosy bacteria. But figuring out how armadillo's livers keep growing under the influence of leprosy bacteria without forming scars or tumors might help scientists better understand the mechanisms of regeneration in the human liver. If we could harness this ability, we might someday be able to help people with liver disease regenerate healthy livers. Conclusion Leprosy has affected people since ancient times. Today, the disease is rare in many places, including the United States. However, it still occurs in more than 120 countries. Currently, about 208,000 people worldwide are infected with leprosy every year, most of them in Brazil, Africa, and Asia. Fortunately, you don't have to worry too much about catching it. Leprosy is not very contagious. Social distancing is enough to stop its spread from person to person. Plus, most people have natural immunity to it. If leprosy is treated early, it is curable. Still, you shouldn't handle any wild armadillos. Wild animals of any kind may carry diseases that can spread to humans. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.